this is Kay Fitzwater and you're watching my channel. Today we're going to talk about writing myths. I know this sounds really weird um, putting it in the middle of the pincer method, but I already gave you the overarching big items that will help propel you through your first draft. Um, all the nitty gritty details kind of overlap um, between the first draft and the second draft and the drafts thereafter. So since this is NaNoWriMo, and since I was talking about the first draft, um, this is a pretty good place to stop. So this last part of the video, or I'm sorry, second to last part of the video series, we'll be talking about writing routine and the writing myths that you will be hearing on YouTube and Tumblr and elsewhere in the writing community what is working, what isn't working, etc. So, even though I am not published yet, I have been writing for two years now. I have written my whole novel from first draft all the way to the fifth draft. I am in the process of querying right now, and I am going through the first draft of my next project. So I have enough writing underneath my belt to know what is a good writing routine for me and what is crap out there that's floating around in the universe. So number one is you have to write every day. This is recommended only for NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo, you are trying to do a whole novel in one month. Um, people are trying to write the word counts, which are equivalent of a chapter per day. Um, and some people who win NaNoWriMo think that all writers should be able to turn out a novel in a month every single time. And I'm here to tell you that's not true. Um, the first draft of The Doppelganger Queen took me five months. Five months of sweat and tears in hashing out the very, very beginnings of the book. Another five months in doing the whole reconstruction second draft. About a month or two and translating it or um, taking care of the grammar issues for the better readers. And another three months or so of doing feedback editing. And since I'm in the middle of the querying process, it may be a couple more editing iterations before it even hits the publishing company. So your story is going to take time to mature and grow and expand and contract and be the beautiful story that it needs to be. Um, I hear in the industry um, that it needs to be anywhere between 10 to 15 drafts before it even goes out to the eyes of the general audience out there. I hear that it is even more. Um, depending on the journey that the writer goes through with their book. And yes, one can do a novel in the month. Um, Stephen King was able to do it for one of his stories. He didn't do that for every single story that he has done. Um, J.K. Rowling took quite some time too on her book. So. I am not afraid to tell you that you don't have to write a novel in a month and um, you won't be able to do that for every single story that you come up with. So why is it a challenge to do a novel in one month? Why most writers don't do it? Well, because we allow ourselves to have breaks and to have a life around this novel writing process. Um, some of us want our weekends. Um, some of us um, want to be able to enjoy our TV shows at night. Um, some of us have families, kids. Um, 
I have parents and siblings I gotta take care of. Um, some of us um, are in school. Some of us are having multiple jobs on top of the writing business, um, etc. So not everyone is able to turn out a novel in a week simply because there's other things going on in our life. Is that bad? Not really. Um, so long you have a healthy balance of work and family and um, taking care of your hobbies if you have any. Um, and staying connected with the community you're part in, you know, you can make a novel on top of this. It's just not going to be as fast as you want it to be. Um, I'm surprised that I'm able to get the first draft done within a year. Um, even in half of a year, you know, that's amazing. I thought it was going to take forever. Uh, when I was doing it. And um, this whole novel experience is going to teach you patience. And trust me, that's something that's really, really hard to understand to deal with until you really dive in into the whole novel writing experience. Um, I think it was Rod Dole that gets so anxious in between books because he's happy that he finished one book but he's very morose that he has to begin the other because doing a novel takes such a long time and such a massive amount of dedication out of your life. So if you're not going to write every day and you are going to have your weekends or your nights. What is a good writing day if you're not doing a whole chapter? Um, honestly, when you feel like you're able to get through a chunk of whatever you're stuck on. Um, like painters, uh, we leave little notes of where we have left off and what our expectations are before we dive in. For those who are conceptual writers or do outlines, um, they have the outline um, index card or script that they could go to and go, oh, today I'm doing blah blah blah, or I have these two scenes, or I'm still in the middle of this chapter which does XYZ. For us pantsers, um, I recommend that you leave a little tiny note um, for yourself where you expect things to go and uh, what you think might happen next. Um, that way when you come back you're not really starting from a blank page. Um, you have something to um, gear up your mind when you sit down and write. Um, but I, sit <laughs> I also suggest not to adhere to that note because you may come up with a better idea than what you have left with it. It could be anywhere from working on a page or two to finishing a scene or finishing that chapter you left, starting a new chapter, um, working out a tricky scenario, um, taking care of that whole dialogue spiel between two characters, um, or taking care of the action sequence. So most writers don't really think in terms of word count per se. Uh, we think about what we're dealing with um, at that moment in the story. So how many hours does a writer do in a writing day? Um, I try to do it as much as I can in the day um, in between all the other things going on. If I'm not doing videos, if I'm not doing Instagram, if I'm not running errands or doing other things at the house, I try to do four to six hours. Um, I used to be able to do a little bit more than that, but that was a passion project 
um, I was able to have the fire in my belly to force it to um, materialize <laughs> on paper. Um, this story feels like a normal kind of writing experience. So I don't have this fire in my belly to quickly put it down on paper or else um, it's, well, uh, you know, I don't have that. Um, so I do roughly anywhere between four to six hours a day. And I take breaks to break up that work time. Um, I do 15 minutes or 30 minutes after a couple of hours. Um, sometimes it's a little bit longer if I really need to drain my mind to start fresh. Um, sometimes one has to in order to deal with writer's block. And it's actually backed up in science. Um, science had said that higher thinking um, jobs or mental exercises requires um, only four to six hours of work. And it's better off if it is four hours in that long sprint. Um, one can, according to the paper, that one can use four hours earlier in the day, have like an hour plus break in between, and then have another four hour stretch. So you can technically do eight hours in a day, but you're going to have a long break in the middle. And that's because you're using abstract concepts, um, you're using creation, imagination to get things going. Um, because this is considered higher thinking um, mentality, you have to um, take some breaks to think and to rest your brain and do something else that doesn't require a lot of thinking. It's quite different than manual labor or anything that requires physical activity. So be kind to yourself. Um, that's another thing that I want to dispel is that the whole no sleep, um, sleep is for the weak, coffee only bra. You know, I get that in that college mentality and you're going through NaNoWriMo, you want to crunch those numbers, you know, I get that. But when it comes to a normal life, unless you have a deadline and you're struggling to meet that deadline, um, for the most part, sleep is a requirement. Um, you have to sleep. You have to dream. You have to come up with ideas. You have to expand your imagination. And one of those is healthy sleeping. We're all talking about brain power here. Um, this is something very important in between your ears. Um, your brain is a brilliant computer. And it's going to need water. It's going to need sleep. It's going to need nutrients. Healthy nutrients to make it think. And you're going to have to give it a rest and let it do something else because it will chew on it and you may see it chew on it when you sleep in your dreams. And it may give you some ideas that you could write down in the middle of the night or when you wake up. This is why I have my journal next to my bed. Just in case something comes up, I could just jot it down. Um, and I've been there. It's really, it's frustrating because I like sleeping, but at the same time, I know that if I let it lie and wake up later, I'll forget it. So, always have a journal next to your bed when you're starting out. So, you're gonna need sleep. You're gonna need breaks. If the law requires a company to give break or breaks to their workers. You need to do the same thing for yourself. If you don't know how to implement breaks in your work time, look up OSHA's requirements. Um, if you're doing eight hours, you need to have an hour in the middle of that day. Um, if you're doing six hours, for the love of God, have a break in the middle of at least 30 minutes. 
make sure you have 15 hour breaks in between your two hours. Um, for every two hours, I should say. Um, you are not going to regret it. Um, it's going to help you keep yourself on task. It's going to keep you sane as you do this. Because it is a marathon. Um, NaNoWriMo is just a sprint. Um, it's just a little sprint of probably a 100 meter dash. That's NaNoWriMo. Novel writing of the first draft and all the editing that comes afterwards is a marathon. And you have to keep at it. It's called persistence and due diligence. And in order for you not to have burnout is to take these breaks and to have a life outside of writing. Another question um, one might have is if I don't have a writing day, is it a useless day or do I fail, you know, as a writer for not writing on that day? If it is a work day. So things have changed for this modern century um, where we have social media and we have the chance to expand our platform before our books are even able to be published. So for some newer writers like myself, um, their sense of um, acceptance that one can build one's platform through social media. Um, that comes with maintaining your website, that comes with um, interacting online, um, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Um, you're interacting with other people who think like you and likes the same things as you do, for the most part. Uh, I call it networking. Um, you're not just reaching out to your fans, you'll get your fans after you publish your book. But before then, you are networking with fellow peers. People who like writing as a hobby, people who like to become an author, people who do freelance, um, people who write nonfiction or fiction or whatever category that they're in. Um, you're just networking across the social platform. To build that community, you have to follow other people, you have to make posts, you have to do other things, you have to put up content. Um, this is kind of the new version of blogging. And on top of that, um, you are going to be brainstorming. Um, if you're not doing the whole social media platform bit, um, you're still going to give yourself time to brainstorm. Thinking about the world um, that they're in, thinking about the character backgrounds, their personality, uh, what type of setting do you want to go into next, um, is it appropriate for where you are in the story context, etc you are going to come up with ideas on the side. And that's not wasted um, at all. Part of the whole job of writing or storytelling is coming up with new ideas so that way you can put it on paper. Um, that's part of our job. And it's really cool that daydreaming is part of our expectations to like do what we need to do. Part of parcel of brainstorming is researching or learning something new. Um, you may be encountering something that is unexpected, like, oh, I'm dealing with quasars. What is a quasar? What am I going to do with a quasar? Um, let me look some things up here. Let me go to Wikipedia. Let me look at some of the NASA pictures, you know, let me get some ideas. That's not a waste of time. Um, it's going to enhance your storytelling if you know what you're talking about, especially if you're doing a sci-fi and you're dealing with some technology. You want to be as accurate as you can be um, for a layman.
uh, for mystery or thrillers, um, if you're dealing with procedural courts or if you're dealing with law enforcement, part of that time is going to be researching the procedures and the expectations of the job and you're going to have to follow them, you're going to have to talk to them, you're going to have to ask some questions. That may not happen before you do your first draft, that may come after your first draft when you're thinking, oh, hey, you know, I'm missing something important here, let me check myself. There's nothing wrong in researching. Some people claim they're researching when they're fooling around online and just having fun and getting distracted. So I recommend that you research only when you absolutely need to. Um, and it's okay that if you're diving into a story and you come across something that you really don't know and you need to stop and take time to look it up. There's nothing wrong with it. Just don't use it as an excuse to do other things like video games. Another thing um, that's not a waste of time that may not be necessarily writing is learning more about the craft. Um, on YouTube, there's a plurifa of people like me giving information that will try to help you um, become a better writer or becoming a better storyteller in some shape or form. And on my part, I try to be as accurate and honest as possible. Um, but there are other tools out there that you can go to to better yourself as a writer. Um, helping writers become authors is a really great blog site. If you're wanting to know more about arcs, plot arcs, character arcs, um, scene arcs, etc., um, that is a great place to start. Um, Film Courage talks about script writing and screenwriting and how those are put on to film and how that storytelling um, tips and techniques are used to bring those stories to life. And some of those can be used in novel writing and novel storytelling. So you could check out Film Courage. Uh, film Courage is on YouTube. Um, there's also Masterclass where professionals of the industry, like James Patterson, um, get to tell you, you know, their writing process and um, do it in a structured class format. You could sign up and look at those. Um, those are really cool. Or you could get a formal education. Um, if this is going to be part of your profession, there's nothing wrong in getting a bachelor's or a master's in this art. It's not a waste of time. So you may not have a writing day, but you're still working. It's still part of your working day. And just like a normal working day, you have to give yourself breaks in between the research and the learning and the brainstorming. Um, it's okay. And last but not least, the myth of, oh, I could just wait for inspiration to write. Um, I disagree. Um, I believe inspiration comes from perspiration. I believe that you have to be actively in your craft to start generating ideas. Because your brain needs to start priming itself to start thinking about it. If you're cooking, your brain is going to think about what you're doing. It's going to be thinking about the food you are cooking, how it smells, what it sounds like, what it smells like, um, what it looks like. Is it a golden brown or are you having a more charcoal texture? Um, sometimes it's going to give you ideas of, hey, put in that lemon juice. That would be a nice addition. No different than writing. When you are writing something, you're going to start generating ideas. Sometimes you'll be in a shower or you'll be waking up and you have an idea to go ahead and jot it down. 
But those ideas won't come in unless you start brainstorming, unless you start writing something down. Um, it takes a while for your brain to get going. And once it does, you have to keep it going. Do not wait for inspiration. Do not wait and sit around like a log and pretend that you're a writer when you're not really doing the thing. If you're going to be a writer, write. Start doing it. Start writing down ideas. Start writing down writing prompts. Start writing down scenarios. Start writing down short stories. Um, start putting down poetry. Poetry is a beautiful thing. Um, it has rhythm, it has cadence, and um, it does tell a story with just a few handful of words, and it's wonderful. Um, do some poetry. You could work your way up to a novel if you so wish, um, but you won't be able to get ins inspiration unless you're in the craft. Then you can start pulling pieces around your world and start putting it in there. Um, that's why we have weekends and we have nights. So we could go out in the world and go, oh hey, that couple is arguing. I like the dialogue that they have. I could look at their emotions and that will help me when I have a couple arguing in one of my future stories. I could use that. I could lock it away in my head. I could use that as inspiration. Um, it may not have to be so bad. It could be just kids having fun on a playset. And you could get a sense of mood of what that feels like. So, if you're in your writing craft, you're going to get inspirations. And your inspirations are going to sometimes be outside of your writing craft. I hear often that many writers said you got to read often. Um, I've been reading for most of my life and my most inspiration for storytelling comes from music. Um, when I hear a certain movement or a certain minor chord change, I start thinking. I am teleported off to a wonderful story idea. I'm already transported to somewhere else when I'm listening to music. Uh, when I look at art pieces, uh, it gives me an idea for how one character should look like, or for a setting, or for a certain mood I should put into my story. Life brings inspiration and you won't be able to know what to do with it unless you're actually doing the thing. So there you have it. Those are the myths about writing, um, what the writing routine is, what it's like outside of NaNoWriMo, and um, what I recommend to do when you are writing if you don't have any deadlines. Um, if you're just working on stories until, you know, opportunity starts knocking on your door. So let me know what you think down there in the comments. Um, what advice do you have for those um, who are trying to have a good writing routine? Um, let me know. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Um, I try to do this on every Thursdays. But in case there's a big snafu, click on that bell. Um, that way you'll be alerted when the next video will be. I'm not going to have a video on Thanksgiving weekend, so I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with all your friends and family, and um, you'll be able to stuff yourself silly with wonderful food while watching your favorite sport or movie. And I'll talk to you later. Bye!